Hello friends, in first couple of lectures we have seen about principal component analysis. In this lecture we will talk about linear discriminant analysis that is again a very popular technique to play with data in machine learning. And again it is a very easy mathematical concept based on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, let us start it and why we need LDA. So, if you see this data set here it is a two dimensional data set and again two classes one class is represented by the green square and another one with red circle. So, if you see this class is easily linearly separable if you put a line here then the data become linearly separable. If you apply the PCA on this data PCA project it to lower dimensional space that is one dimensional space by projecting data in the direction of maximum variance. So, if I see this is the up after applying the PCA on this data I am having this kind of data. So, now you can see I am having mixing of this data. This data is no more linearly separable like here because here you can separate this data in R2 by a line, but here in 1D you cannot find out any point one side of that point you are having green patterns and another side of the uh, point you are having the red class pattern. So, what we are observing here the direction of maximum variance may be useless for classification. Why? Because my data is linearly separable here I can use a linear classifier for classifying this data, but if I am coming to lower dimensional space what I am having my data is no more linearly separable. So, why to come to lower dimensional or in other way I want to say that I can go to lower dimensional, but it should preserve the property of linear classification of the data means if the data is linearly separable in the higher dimensional space then after projecting into lower dimensional space the data should be still linearly separable. So, how to find out such a line? So, that the property of linear separability should be preserved. So, for example, here the main idea of linear discriminant analysis is find projection to a line such that samples from different classes are well separated or linearly separated. So, for example, if you see again these data, so this is the example of PCA and it is not well separated, but instead of this if the same data I project onto this line you can see this data here you will find a green cluster, here you will find a red cluster and this data will be well separated. So, now the objective of linear discriminant analysis is to find out the direction of such a line for a given data set. Like the objective of PCA was to find out the direction of maximum variances. Here the objective is different find direction such that if we project the data on the line on those directions or on the subspace of those direction the data should be well separated. So, this is the idea of linear discriminant analysis. Now, in this lecture we will learn how to do it and again I told you like PCA it is very easy just we will play with eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix. So, let us see here if I am saying that after projection my data should be well separated or linearly separated then one can say ok in that case what should we have we should have. Uh, small clusters like here of the data or not small cluster, but the centroid of the data after projection should be far away from each other. 
So, for example, if you see here this mu 1 is the centroid of the data in two dimension means before projection and mu 2 is the mean of the data before projection for class 2. So, I am having two class data and then if I project it on two x axis means on the on to a horizontal line this mu 1 cap and mu 2 cap are the centroid of the data after projection to the horizontal line. So, uh, similarly mu 1 tilde and mu 2 tilde are the projection of mu 1 and mu 2 that is the centroid of the data of different classes before projection to after projecting onto a vertical line. So, if I project data onto a horizontal line you can see this is the distance between mu 1 cap and mu 2 cap. If I project onto vertical line this is the distance between mu 1 tilde and mu 2 tilde. So, now if I am assuming that the mean of the two classes after projection should be far away from each other means maximize the distance between the mean. Then in this case this distance is bigger than this one, but in this direction the data is not well separated while in this direction the data is well separated. So, the concept or the idea which we have taken that larger the distance between the mean of the two classes the better is the data will be well separated after projection no it is not true due to this example. So, we are missing something the mean should be far away from each other is that it does not consider the variance of the classes. Because in this direction if I project on to horizontal line the data is not well separated why because in this direction I am having bigger variance of the data when compared to vertical direction because in vertical direction variance is quite small. So, I have to normalize this idea that is the mean should be far away from each other after projection by the variance. How to do it? So, how to normalize it? So, concept of LDH is clear to you by now. Now, suppose we have two classes and a d dimensional samples x 1, x 2, x n, where n 1 samples are coming from class 1. So, let us say this class is C 1 and n 2 samples are coming from class 2 let us say C 2. Now, if x i be a data point so what n 1 samples are coming from class 1 and n 2 samples are com coming from class 2. So, n 1 plus n 2 equals to n. Now, if x i be a data point then its projection on the line having direction given by unit vector v is given as 
V transpose Xi. That is the dot product between V and Xi. So, we are uh, assuming that we are having n samples from d dimensional space n 1 samples from class 1 and 2 samples are coming from class 2 and the projection as I told you that if I want to project a point x i on a line having direction given by unit vector v then this projection is given by v transpose x i. Now, let mu 1 and mu 2 be the means or centroid of class C1 and C2 respectively before projection means in original di dimension or for original data points. Then if mu 1 delta denote the di uh, mean of samples of class 1 that is class C 1 after projection then what we are having? mu 1 tilde equals to how many total points from class 1? n 1. So, 1 upon n 1 summation all points belongs to class 1. So, x i belongs to c 1 and these are n 1 points v transpose x i. So, I can take v transpose out 1 upon n summation x i belongs to c 1 to n point x i this is v transpose and what is this? This is mu 1. So, mu 1 tilde is v transpose mu 1. Similarly, we have mu 2 tilde equals to v transpose mu 2. In LDA what we need? In LDA we need to normalize the distance between the two means after projection that is absolute value of the difference of mu 1 and mu 2 by variance or I am writing a scatter. So, now how to define these scatters? So, let y i equals to v transpose x y means be the projected sample. So, then scatter for samples of class C 1 is given by let us say S 1 tilde square and this is y i belongs to class C 1 and then y i minus mu 1 tilde whole square. So, it is variance only just we have uh, not taking 1 upon n 1 here. Similarly, for class 2 it will become y i belongs to c 2 y i minus mu 2 tilde square. So, these are these two are giving the scatters. Now, thus we need to project 
our data onto a line having direction v such that which maximize so something like this so what it should maximize so into of absolute i am taking the square so the same thing happen so it will say you that mean of the two classes after projections are far away from each other so distance between the two means after projection we are maximizing while we have to normalize it so so what it is saying it is saying that the class 1 is scatter after projection should be small similarly it is saying for class 2 and it is saying you that mean of the two class should be as far away as possible so in that way what we are having we are imposing both the conditions here that uh, the mean should be far away from each other and we have normalized that by the scatter mat, uh, also so now how to do it so now if we find v which makes j v large we are guaranteed that the classes are well separated ok. So, this is important point. So, first what we need to do we have need to do this objective function we need to write in terms of v. So, how to write it in terms of v? So, now what we are having we are having j v equals to mu 1 tilde minus mu 2 tilde square upon s 1 tilde square plus s 2 tilde square. So, we need to write this j in terms of v. So, now define the separate class scatter matrix S1 and S2 of classes C1 and C2 means before projection. So, what will be S1? So, by the concept of covariance matrix it will be X i belongs to C1 x i minus mu 1 multiplied by x i minus mu 1 transpose. So, by the concept of covariance matrix only thing we are not dividing it by 1 upon n 1. Similarly, s 2 will become x i belongs to c 2 x i minus mu 2 multiplied with x i minus mu 2 transpose. So, what will happen using this we will be having two matrix S1 and S2. So, once you are having these two matrix now define within class
स्केटर मैट्रिक्स एज एस डब्ल्यू इक्वल्स टू एस वन प्लस एस टू सो नाउ वाट इज एस वन टील द स्क्वायर देट इज द स्केटर आफ्टर प्रोजेक्शन फॉर क्लास वन पेटर्न सो इफ यू डू ए बिट कैलकुलेशन वाट यू विल फाइंड इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी वी ट्रांसपोज एस वन इन टू वी एंड सिमिलरली यू विल गेट एस टू टील द स्क्वायर वी ट्रांसपोज एस टू इन टू वी सो फ्रॉम हियर इफ आई सी द डिनोमिनेटर ऑफ जे वी दैट इज एस वन टील द स्क्वायर प्लस एस टू टील द स्क्वायर सो इट इज वी ट्रांसपोज एस वन प्लस एस टू इन टू वी एंड वाट इज एस वन प्लस एस टू दैट इज विद इन क्लास स्केटर मैट्रिक्स दैट इज एस डब्ल्यू सो दिस इज द डिनोमिनेटर ऑफ जे वी सो दिस इक्वल्स टू दिस वन सो लेट एस से स्टार नाउ डिफाइन बिटवीन द क्लास स्केटर मैट्रिक्स That is S B between class scatter matrix. Then certainly it will be the difference of two means, and then transpose of that product of that. Now, what this S B measures? S B measures separation between the means of two classes before projection. so means of two classes after projection mean separation of the means of two classes after projection is just v transpose mu1 minus v transpose mu2 square this i can write v transpose mu1 minus mu2 mu1 minus mu2 transpose into v and this comes out to vt sb into v so this is the numerator of jv so now what jv is we have to find out v which maximize jv where jv equals to earlier it was mu1 minus mu2 square upon s1 till the square plus s2 till the square and this we have reduced it vt sb v upon v transpose sw v so for optimizing this one what we have to do we have to make d by dv of jv equals to 0 and if you do it it will give you after certain calculation that sbv minus v transpose sbv multiplied with swv upon v transpose एस डब्ल्यू वी इक्वल्स टू जीरो नाउ सी दिस वैल्यू वाट इज दिस इट इज ए स्केलर वैल्यू एंड दैट इज योअर जे वी मीन्स विच यू नीड टू मैक्सिमाइज सो लेट अस एज्यूम दैट इट इज योअर लेमडा सो इट विल बिकम एस बी वी माइनस लेमडा एस डब्ल्यू वी इक्वल्स टू जीरो और एस बी वी इक्वल्स टू एस डब्ल्यू इंटू लेमडा वी और आई कैन इफ एस डब्ल्यू इज इनवर्टिबल एस डब्ल्यू इनवर्स एस बी वी इक्वल्स टू लेमडा वी नाउ दिस इज ए मैट्रिक्स लेटर से दिस आई एम राइटिंग एम एम वी इक्वल्स टू लेमडा वी 
So, you have to find out V which maximize the lambda and now what is lambda here? By this you can see that because V should be a non zero vector, it is a direction vector of the line. So, it is the Eigen value of m by the definition of Eigen values and Eigen vectors. So, and what you have to maximize the lambda. So, which Eigen value you have to take which is the largest one because you have to maximize jv and what is jv? jv is your lambda only. So, you have to maximize lambda. So, you have to take lambda which is the largest means largest Eigen value of m. So, what is v here? So, I can write v is the Eigen vector of S w inverse S b S w inverse S b corresponding to largest or biggest Eigen value. So, what you do? samples are with you, you can easily find out capital S w and capital S b, because capital S b will come from the means and capital S w will come from the scatters from the covariance of two classes. So, once you are having capital S w matrix and capital S b matrix, then you can easily find out S w inverse into S b. So, V is the direction given by the Eigen vector of S w inverse S b corresponding to the largest Eigen value. So, this is easily you can calculate. However, more we can do more manipulation in, in this that what you are having you come out S b v equals to lambda S w into V. So, if S w is full rank that is inverse exist S w inverse S b v equals to lambda v, but what you are having for any vector x S b x for points in the same direction. H mu 1 minus mu 2. Why? Because S b x equals to mu 1 minus mu 2 mu 1 minus mu 2 transpose into x and it is because mu 1 minus mu 2 transpose x will be a uh, some scalar. So, alpha mu 1 minus mu 2. So, S b x is some scalar times mu 1 minus mu 2. So, they points in the same direction. So, what I can do? So, from here I can make that in that case V equals to S w inverse into mu 1 minus mu 2. So, even though you no need to calculate S b, because S w is there once you are having S w find out the inverse and the direction of v is given by the product of S w inverse with the vector mu 1 minus mu 2. If uh, w is not full rank then you can make use of some kind of pseudo inverse in this case. So, let us see an example of this. So, suppose I am having this data, we are having total 11 points, class 1 has 5 samples. So, C 1, these 5 1 2 2 3 3 3. So, these are denoted by these blue points. Similarly, class 2 has 6 points given by these coordinates. So, this is a 2 dimensional data and I want to project this data onto a line in 1 D. So, that it should remain as linearly separable, well separable, the best separability should be guaranteed. So, what you do first? You arrange these data points into two separate matrices. So, here I am having 5 samples. So, it will be a 5 by 2 matrix and it will be a 6 by 2 matrix. 
let us say this for class 1 I am saying C 1 for this I am saying class uh, C 2. If you see in uh, uh, PCA, PCA project onto this line and you can see here the data is not well separated. So, now you what you do you are having C 1 which is a 5 by 2 matrix. So, I am continuing with the same example and C 2 which is again a 6 by 2 matrix. So, it will be having 1, 2 and then 5, 5. So, blue points and it is 1, 0, 6, 5 means red points. Now, you compute mu 1, mu 1 is the mean of this class C 1 patterns. So, it comes out to be 3 which is the mean average of this column and average of second column 3.6. Similarly, I calculate mu 2, mu 2 comes out to be 3.3 which is the average of this column and then 2, 2 and 2. Now, calculate S 1. So, S 1 is the covariance matrix 4 times covariance matrix of C 1 and this comes out to be 1, 10, 8, 8 and 7.2. Similarly, S 2 will be 5 times covariance of C 2. So, from these two columns you can easily find out covariance of C 2 and this comes out to be 17.3. 17.3, 16, 16, 16. So, here SW within class scatter matrix is S1 plus S2 and this S1 plus S2 becomes 27.3, 24, 24 and 23.2. Now, SW inverse becomes 0 0.39 minus 0 0.41 minus 0 0.41 0 0.47. Now, from the previous derivation what is the line V which maximize J V that is S w inverse into mu 1 minus mu 2 and once you calculate it, it comes out to be minus 0 0.79 and 0 0.89. So, this is the line and then you can project all the points there. So, I have given here. So, this is the line and once you project these point here, these will be the projection and this is the best possible linear separable data after projection on to 1D. So, this is about linear discriminant analysis. Now, you can generalize into multiple classes because this derivation we have made using only two classes. So, in case of C classes can reduce to dimension 2 up to 1 to 3 up to C minus 1 dimension. So, if you are having like 10 classes you can reduce the dimension up to 9. Project sample x i to a linear subspace y i. So, now it will be the subspace of x i and this projection will be given by the projection matrix we transpose. So, for example, here I am talking about 3 dimension. So, you are projecting here, here in w 1 they are well separated in R 2 while here it is not well separated. So, I have to find out this projection matrix and this you can easily find out the using the concept of linear discriminant analysis. So, these are the references for this lecture some of the slides I have taken from this uh, course notes. Thank you very much.